Hi. Um, so a few years ago, I was in school at St. Michael's College. I was busy injecting rats with nicotine to study its effect on their motivational behavior. Well, I imagined what my life would be like in Beirut, where I was planning to continue my studies in neuropsychology the following year. And I remember this coworker at the time telling me with sort of this glazed look of fascination, um, like, oh, in six months, you're going to be in that full-on post-graduation existential crisis panic mode. And I remember thinking he was wrong because I had a plan and I already had my existential crisis last year, so I didn't really <laughs> see why I would have another. Um, so six months later, and I'm in that full-on post-graduation existential crisis panic, um, I was completely doubting what I was doing, what I had been working towards, comparing myself to everyone around me, wondering what I should be doing, I was compulsively doing tarot card readings, not because I believed in them, but I just was hoping for any sign of what to do next. <laughs> and after the series of anxiety-induced dreams um, in which I was this terrible mother because I was trying to focus on so many things of what I should be doing, what I ought to be doing with my career that I forgot that I actually had kids, and this therapist sat me down and was like, look, these dreams you're having are not prophetic. Um, you're probably not going to be a terrible mother, but um, they might be trying to tell you something. And maybe there's some sort of inner child that you're neglecting, um, that you could really learn something to apply to your life. So I took a deep breath, and I committed to not think about the future for a year. Um, and... With that being my only goal, I bought a one-way ticket to LA <laughs> and decided to just fill my time with completing the absolute necessities, finding a job, an apartment, and then just doing what seemed fun. <laughs> um, for me, that was making chocolate and writing comedy. Um, and the first nine months of this plan went great. I had written a script at the end of nine months. We were talking to production companies. I was working for the writer of Narcos. Um, I even had investors asking to get involved in this chocolate business that I had just started for fun out of my kitchen. And I was living on the beach. I was literally like, realizing my dreams without even realizing that I was realizing them. Um, and then I was brought to the next realization um, of this sort of experiment, <laughs> um, which was much harder, and that was that not predicting the future is a skill. Uh, it takes practice. So around nine months, and I start to slip up in this plan to not think about the future. And I realized that I only had three months left of not thinking about the future. And then what was I going to be doing with my life? <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was ready to commit to actually being a writer because all these opportunities that hadn't even conceived to myself as like potential things that could happen nine months ago suddenly seemed to be like the determinant of my future success as a person. And when the script wasn't selling immediately and this talk show that we were offered a spot on was going under before it even we had the chance to appear on it, <laughs> uh, suddenly I started to panic and compare myself again to what everyone else around me was doing. Um, I was wondering why I didn't have a job at CAA or Nickelodeon or Vice. <laughs> And not just my career, but I was wondering where my life story was going. It didn't seem interesting enough to continue being a writer. I was jealous of my boyfriend at the time, not because he had an Emmy, but because he had been held in a Chinese prison. And I had never been held in prison anywhere, so I didn't know <laughs> what that said about my, where my life was going. <laughs> um, so as this year kind of came to a, a close, I had an emotional breakdown or another crisis, <laughs> um, in part triggered by this infection, but which ironically I didn't realize how sick I was at the time because I was so busy comparing myself to how everyone else had cooler lives or near-death experiences than whatever I was going through. <laughs> um, so I decided to do the mature adult thing and commit to a more predictable future uh, 
just leave the writing aside as a side project despite much encouragement from established writers or producers or friends that said to just keep going with it, that it was fine. I was not ready to commit to a future of uncertainty. <laughs> um, so I decided to move back to the East Coast and find a certain and stable job. Uh, luckily, this failed as well. <laughs> uh, within a few weeks of being back in New York, I was introduced to my new writing partner and this person who I never imagined I would meet, but happened to have their own series of eclectic friends. So a uh, script that I had been working on as a side project that I wasn't really trying to think about the future of because that just, to me, would immediately lead to all this anxiety about whether it could fail or not. <laughs> um, took a turn from an aimless romantic comedy to an underground espionage leading up to the 2016 elections. And suddenly we were working with and befriending these former spies, these former CIA officers, former sex workers, professional hackers, um, all these people with these incredible stories that were helping us to create this new dream that I couldn't have imagined would even be a dream six months ago. <laughs> Um, by the end of that year, we had been to over 14 countries, um, all of which were on the verge of this potential radical political change. Uh, we were shooting with the head of Ukrainian special forces in Ukraine. We toured Kiev with protesters who, four years earlier, while I was still in school, uh, were literally fighting in the sewers against the military for the future of their country that they really, truly believed in. Um, then we were in Kenya with a woman who risks her life probably like bi-weekly to save girls from early forced marriage. And at some point I realized that I was once again fulfilling my childhood dreams and it was nothing like what I imagined they were a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. <laughs> um, and I had given up on that predictable future. Um, and I also realized that not predicting, not thinking about the future, not predicting the future is not about having these hopes or dreams, but it's realizing you have no idea where these dreams might lead you. <laughs> um, there's definitely still moments today where I start to doubt everything I'm doing, and despite being told by people that have been involved in the industry for a very long time, that the script and the story we're working on is in the best possible spot short of being guaranteed and sold, I start to doubt if I'm not doing enough to guarantee my future or to guarantee a success. Um, I'll start to, again, compare myself to everyone around me, <laughs> thinking why I haven't kidnapped war criminals in Yugoslavia or really anything that people around me are doing. <laughs> um, and it's usually in these moments that somebody will have to remind me, usually it's my writing partner or a friend. Uh, the last time I was having one of these moments, my writing partner pulled me out of this. It was like, listen, you're in Ramallah in the West Bank <laughs> right now, surrounded by friends that are embassy employees and traders what about your childhood self would not be happy? <laughs> and I realized, first of all, that he was right, and also that it's probably for the best that I didn't stick to my actual childhood dream, which was becoming Britney Spears. <laughs> um, and that none of these people that sometimes I'm filled with this childlike sense of wonder and I'm so inspired by and so happy, and then in my more anxious moments wondering why I'm not doing what they're doing, <laughs> Um, I realize they all have these amazing stories and are living in these completely uncertain futures and uncertain communities, whether it's in Ukraine or Russia or Ramallah or DC, um, but they're all working towards their dreams. And I realize that my future is still very uncertain, but the ability to act towards my dreams, whatever they become, is always going to be certain.